upbraided not and it shall be given him and we began to establish that the writer of james actually in the original text says if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of the giving god he wants us to see god through the adjective the giving god he is the giving god and he operates not he does not find fault god does not find fault he gives to everybody so we began to establish that the character of god should never be an issue when it comes to prayer because we know that god is the all giving god even before we pray he has already answered the prayer he gives good gifts he gives good gifts and you must remember we don't pray to get god's attention because we already have secured god's attention in christ prayer is not getting god's attention we already have his attention in christ that's why first john chapter 5 verse 14 and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he heareth us or you can read it the other way around that he heareth us according to his will that is hearing us is his will hearing us is his will because he is the giving god and he does not find fault so we have confidence that when we ask anything him hearing us is his will him hearing us is his will that's the confidence we have and we know he will hear us it has nothing to do with the petition he says according to his will he hears us that means his will is to hear us oh a scripture says unto you that answered prayer shall all flesh come that is his desire that is his nature we, we said that god's character is reflected in his answers to prayer his character he is good he is perfect so when you pray his goodness and perfection is the answer you get to that prayer and everything that comes from him is within the parameters of his goodness and his perfection so therefore when he says he hears us it relates to our right standing with him our right standing with him and that is the first thing you were given by grace you were given the gift of righteousness you are not righteous by merit you are righteous by grace so because we have right standing because the word righteousness means to have right standing with god it means we have a right stand with god we we and god are always in a place of harmony in our relationship we have right standing we don't come to god to secure right standing uh -uh. we have constant right standing with god when we pray and even when we are not praying our stand with god is fixed we have right standing with god in christ so therefore when you're praying it's important for you to pray with that understanding prayer is not seeking audience with god we already have audience with god in christ first peter 3 12 for the eyes of the lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers so righteousness is our fixed stand with god we don't try to be righteous we are righteous and we don't do anything to be righteous that is our fixed standing with god in christ we are righteous not because we pray but because that's who christ made us in his substitutionary sacrifice we are we always have his attention we always have his glory and we always have his presence with us always the attention of god the glory of god and the presence of god is guaranteed with us always we are not in need we have all of that supplied in christ so we don't enter the presence of god in prayer we don't come before him in prayer we are always in him and we are always before him even when we are sleeping we are in him and we are always before him so prayer is not getting to god uh -uh. it's not getting to god so what is prayer therefore prayer is a practice of that presence where we are we are in his presence all the time so when we pray it is a practice we are making of the presence that we're enjoying we're not trying to come into his presence let us come into his presence that is not for the believer let us enter his gates that is not for the believer david had to enter because david was not regenerated 
so they had to enter david's desire is that i will dwell in the house of the lord forever that thing david desired is what you have he lives in you forever david wanted to be like you so you now don't be desiring to enter and stay in the house of god forever you have backdated yourself before the cross you have backdated yourself to function before the cross after the cross he moved his headquarters on your inside somebody shout i hear you he lives in you he walks in you his presence is in you somebody shout i have the presence of god guaranteed so we do not try to enter his presence we live in his presence all the time whether we feel it or we don't feel it that's where we are amen i said amen so the audience aspect of prayer is the practice of his presence which we already have the practice of his presence which we already have so that's why you know um hearing whether god is hearing you or not is not necessary because you already know he hears you and because you know he hears you always you know that you have what you ask are we here because does he hear you all the time even before jesus died what did jesus say father i thank you huh? that was before he died now when he died and rose he gave birth to a, a new creation that became his house where he lives he lives in you you don't have to shout for him to hear you he lives inside you he's hearing you so you too when you come in prayer you joyfully and confidently say father i thank you that you hear me now if we know that he hears us then we know that the things that we desire of him we have is that not what first john chapter 5 says first john chapter 5 verse 14 and there's a confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will according to his will he heareth us and if we know that he hears whatsoever we ask we know that we have eh, when did we have it when we received when did we receive when we prayed when we prayed we received when we receive we know that we have it see i hear you so there's no place for unanswered prayer we know and if you note here it is no no there are two no's if we know number one he hear us so there's a place of knowledge if you're going to be a very effective prayer person there's a place of knowledge if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask we know so there is knowing the hearing and the knowing in the having is very important that's why teaching like this cannot be overemphasized there's a lot of knowledge required for you to operate in robust victory did you hear what i said for you to operate in what kind of victory robust victory there's a lot of knowledge you need robust knowledge to function in robust victory not some casual knowledge where you're scratching here and there small time if you don't even know what to do because there's no sufficiency of knowledge it is that you are basking in knowledge so before something happens because of the abundance of knowledge you know what to do about it you're not doting about nothing you are functioning in robust revelation why because you have sat down for this word to be deposited on your inside and out of the abundance of your heart your mouth does not lack what to say for he himself knew what to do so nothing flabbergasted him if we know that he hear us then we know that whatever we ask we have amen somebody shout i know can i hear you shout it i didn't say say i know say i shout i know so prayer is not getting to god see it's not getting to god so notice what john says we know which is mark eleven twenty four. 24 what things soever you desire when you pray believe you receive and you shall have you pray you receive you have we know we know so prayer is not getting god's attention prayer is not coming before god 
we are in an everlasting relationship and fellowship with god such that we are always before him and he is always before us there is no break and no vacation it's an everlasting relationship notice in all the apostles and epistles it is only paul that taught us where prayer power comes from only paul james talks about power the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man make it power available but doesn't tell us where it comes from so it is paul that took the time to tell us where the power of prayer is generated from and paul in teaching prayer does not mention faith in the teaching of paul's prayer he never mentioned faith go and read the pauline epistles he never mentioned faith one time the only thing paul kept mentioning was that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know he never prayed that you may have faith because coming to christ is coming to faith but you can come to faith and not know what you have received the only place you will see if you have faith or have faith in god is in the gospels before jesus died it was in the gospels before he died after he died and rose he never asked anybody to have faith he only asked people to know i'm teaching here in the gospels have faith after resurrection no know that you have know that you have you shall have them when you receive them when did you receive them when you prayed hallelujah i said hallelujah look at the way john puts it in first john 5 13. these things have i written unto you that believe on the name of the son of god that you may know that you have eternal life somebody say i have now say i know say i know i have eternal life you know what you just said whether i feel or i don't feel does not make any difference because my knowledge does not function by my feelings are you together with me now so somebody say i know that i have eternal life say it very loud like you know what you're talking about say i know that i have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the son of god so after he settled the matter of believing which brought eternal life which is the basis for you and god in right standing once you have eternal life once you believe and you know it the next thing is what confidence confidence is a byproduct of knowledge no no father i don't know if, uh -uh. it's not a matter of what i don't know you mean. father i thank you that you hear me always hallelujah confidence that we have that if we ask anything according to his will he hear it us and if we know we believe then now that we believe the next thing is no and if we know then we know we have praise god paul says in ephesians 3 20 now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the dynamics that energy in us according to the power so whatever god does is restricted to the power inside us so when we pray our prayers are answered from inside us it's according to the power at energy in us that god does the hooper balloon exceeding abundantly above all it is according according it's like we say i have air conditioner in my room but the air conditioner is only able to work according to the power supplied by nepa so where is the source of the power that makes my air conditioner work nepa so the exceeding god is able to do all that he can do in his might but it is limited to the power at work in us so whatever god does for us will be determined by what is at work in us so our prayers are answered from us are you understanding it's important you understand that so you know that everything is within you huh. according to the power paul shows us where the prayer power comes from it is generated from within us
the prayer power is generated from within us let's look at a scenario here in genesis chapter 18. now first of all why was abraham able to make requests on behalf of sodom and gomorrah he was not only making a request he was insisting what gave abraham such boldness not only to make a request but to insist not only to insist but to negotiate what gave abraham that boldness in genesis 18 it's in genesis chapter 15 verse 6 and he believed in the lord and it was counted to him for what and the effectual father prayer those words so abraham could insist because of the stand where he was he was in a place of right standing when you pray from a position of the revelation of identity your prayer is different because you are not praying as a beggar you are praying as one in him in fact you are praying as one with him i'm teaching now identity critical when it comes to prayer yes you're praying as him because you and him are one huh. abraham insisted the kind of prayer abraham prayed there in the book of genesis i will soon show you abraham was not a sinner secondly i taught you abraham did not sin after the similitude of adam's transgression so abraham was not a sinner what was abraham righteous so that stand gave him the audacity to engage that negotiation and if he had insisted till supposing you find one god will have said they will not destroy that city even if he had said supposing you do not find any are you not a righteous god god will have changed his mind because the same thing that made a man drop from 50 to 40 to 30 to 20 can make him drop to nothing For, don't forget he's generous but when abraham stopped persisting he gave up and i'm going to show you how that works in a few minutes but look at psalm 32 verse 1 blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven whose sin is covered blessed is the man unto whom the lord imputed not iniquity and in whose spirit there is no guile was abraham free from from transgression was abraham free from iniquity what was he called huh and they that be of faith are blessed with who faithful abraham so abraham was righteous by faith how are you righteous so the same thing that god did to abraham he does to you today the blessing of abraham is righteousness by faith what is your own blessing righteousness by faith so because you are righteous by faith then now we can say that the effectual father prayer of you make it what tremendous power available and that power is dynamic in its workings in the workings in its results you are the greatest dynamite planet earth has ever seen not even a nuclear weapon can stand before you you can stop a nuclear weapon from being detonated you can speak to it and it will not respond just like the tree dried up then while some theologians confuse themselves and say that tree was just a parable jesus messed them up because in matthew said you shall say to the mountain so if the tree was a parable what about the mountain he was dealing with things you can speak to the nuclear weapon it will stop are you with me here yeah have dominion over what over things where eh? in earth under the earth in the sea who has dominion where are nuclear weapons eh? who has dominion over them what are you talking about What about tsunamis who has dominion over tsunamis that's right you say to this it should obey you that was before he died when he rose he said all power in heaven and where then he said now i give it to you who is in power now the same power that jesus operates you operate
Blessed is the man. Blessed is the woman. So when we talk about being in the presence of God, we're talking about being right standing with God and that's what you have. Now, take note. God owns the earth, but he gave man to exercise authority over it. Abi? Uh -huh. So I have right standing with God in the place of prayer. 2 Corinthians 5.21 In Christ, I am made righteous. In Christ. I am not made righteous because of where I came from in Nigeria. I am made righteous because I'm in Christ. I am seated in Christ. I am made righteous in Christ. I am seated where? In Christ. So when I pray, where am I praying? In Christ. I'm not praying outside Christ. When I sing praise worship, where am I singing? Eh? So can you imagine me singing in Christ? There is something that makes me inside Christ. Eh? Bello, bello, bello. Inside Christ. You see belly low. And see what the Lord can do in Christ. The Lord has done. You can't be in Christ. I'm talking about what the Lord will do. Christ finished what the Lord will do. He finished the works. In Christ there is no more work. What do we have in Christ? He spoke it ahead of time. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you what? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. When you learn of me, you shall what? Find what? So the knowledge of Christ is rest. The day you receive Christ, you receive the rest. You can't be in Christ and be looking for rest. So you can't come to Christ and be saying, see what the Lord can do. What the Lord can do, he has done. Hmm? So there remained therefore a rest for the people of God and we that believe what happened to us. Are you a believer? Where are you now? You are a rest. So it's not what the Lord can do. It's what the Lord has done. That's why you shall receive you shall lambano. I'm teaching here. Please catch this. It will make the, a world of difference in your work with Jesus. You must know what your identity is in Christ. If not, it will affect the way you talk. The more you know who you are in Christ the more you know what you have in christ the more you know who you are in christ the more you know what you have in christ philemon says that the communication of your faith may be effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in christ all good things are where in you when i acknowledge what christ has done in me my faith becomes effectual the acknowledging of what he has done even in the place of prayer the acknowledging of what he has done makes my faith effectual so knowing who i am in christ helps and aids my prayer amen now, so we establish number one that the principles of praying for things is that when i pray i believe i receive and what shall happen i shall have prayer for things i believe i have received them i have them that's how faith work for things 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 in between prayer and having is receiving that's the principle for things in between prayer and having is receiving i believed i have received then i have how do i believe i have received i believe with my heart and i confess with my mouth 
that's how i know i believe i have received because my heart and mouth will agree on earth as touching things and it shall be done so i carry my answers in my thoughts and i carry my answers in my mouth all week long all month long i will pray throughout with the answer in my mouth Kenneth Copeland say, read Mark 11, 24, the other way around. If you read it the other way around, it says, I shall have what I believed I received when I prayed. That's the way to read it the other way around. I shall have what I believed I received when I prayed. When you pray, believe you receive, you shall have. So, I shall have what I believed I received when i prayed when did i believe it when i prayed when did i receive it when i prayed when will i have it when i received it are you in the house yeah that's important as it has to do with things you don't ask for joy in prayer uh -uh. you don't ask god for joy father give me joy father give me joy uh -uh. you don't ask for joy because joy is already present in your spirit the fruit of the spirit is what joy so what do you do you rejoice don't ask for joy you rejoice stand up deliberately rejoice it's not a feeling just rejoice you don't have to feel it rejoice until you rejoice rejoice again i say uh, so don't say father give me joy uh -uh. that is a denial of the finished work of christ joy is part of the benefit of the finished work of christ deposited in your spirit so don't ask god to give you joy you stand up and rejoice with the joy available in your spirit somebody hearing me say i hear you yeah. there are things you don't ask for you don't ask for because they're already in you it's like saying father make me sing father make me sing no you don't ask god to make you sing what do you do uh -huh. it's like saying father make me pray you don't ask god to make you pray that's i can tell you a lazy person you don't ask god to make you pray what do you do you pray i need to clear all that because there are people that are still praying those prayers so what do you ask god for school fees why school fees because school fees is not in your spirit school fees is in somebody's hand it's a thing are we together here you ask for school fees you ask for employment because the job is in somebody's hand you ask for promotion because somebody is over the panel that will sign the promotion you ask for your check to be paid because somebody has to sign it i'm talking here now you ask for car because it's in a showroom somewhere you ask for land because somebody in uyo is holding the sea of o who was born earlier before you i was born with you but was wiser than you or smarter than you or ahead of you are we together here yes so you don't ask for things that are in your spirit you ask for things that are in people's hands remember i told you god will either use people to give to you or use your industry please i need to clear this because i really needed to understand this because i want us to have a very dangerous prayer year as we go on praying this year amen amen so whatever you need is in someone's hand you don't ask for a woman or a man you don't receive a woman and a man why a woman has a will and a man has a will so you don't receive man and woman why do you receive car car has no will why do you receive school fees it has no will why do you receive job employment promotion land house those things have no will but when it comes to man did i teach you about the will of man 
a woman that will say yes to your request for marriage has a will she can say no look at god literally begging adam literally i said before you life and death blessing and cursing choose life please that it may be well. god is literally begging adam why didn't god say whether you like it or how you will choose it before you know it except i'm not god you will just discover that you have chosen life adam let me tell you emphatically whether you want it or you don't want it you will end in life if you begin to push the theory of predestination it means it was god that prepared the destiny of adam in sin there is foreknowledge he knows the future but he doesn't decide what comes out of the future the decisions of what comes out of the future he has submitted it to your will you decide what you want but he knows what you will decide because he is god but he did not influence what you will decide but he can tell because he knows the end from the beginning but he's not involved in the decision how many of you understand you cannot force somebody to marry you no you can't marriage is a choice and it's a willing choice that's why when a man is beating his wife it doesn't make sense she willingly married you it was not by force two of you sat down abby you were cutting each other even those sisters that say me and my husband there was no time in two months we have married within that two months two months is 60 days there was cutting there was courtship there was some kind of cutting two of you must have seen each other you must have talked to each other you must have drank cocoa coffee together you must have had a little discussion that led to the pulpit it, nobody just said follow and you appeared on the pulpit you try turning down it will be witchcraft even in witchcraft it doesn't work that fast you don't force the will of a man you don't force the will of a woman when he the spirit of truth is come he will convict the world he will convict the world he will convict you so god rules the will of man there is a wooing that takes place so when you are praying for somebody that you have interest in and you want to get married to you that's a prayer i want to show you now you pray so that god through the instrument of your prayer can begin to woo the person with circumstances with situations with things around to bring the person to a place of conclusion there is no forcing in this you don't receive a wife she's not a thing say you i receive you as a wife right now in the name of jesus i receive you now meanwhile as she's looking at you she feels like vomiting because everything in you irritates her stomach and then you are being saying i receive it i will pour you hot water i receive do all you want to do i receive you now you know the next thing she will do to you she will post you her wedding card because you don't receive are we in the house are we in the house okay so well how do you get a wife or a husband or all of that so let's get into that a little bit let's look at people and situations because that's where i'm going to now people and situations i've looked at people and things now i'm looking at people and situation now let me ask all of your question who makes situations happen huh who creates situations man people situations are created by people is that true let me give you a, a very simple scenario uh, honey please loan me two hundred thousand i will pay you in two days you gave me the two hundred thousand and in two days i don't pay what have i created a situation how did that situation appear through people so all the situations you will deal with in life are a product of people's handwork do you understand every situation whether it is war accident disaster oppression wickedness attack arm robbery kidnapping is all created by people they sack you from office somebody was behind it you don't believe no office just sacks you somebody must say we are overstaffed we are overstaffed then the account department said we can no longer pay salaries 
management will say eh? downsize somebody created it then when they say downsize the next thing is management will say who are the people we can throw out and not feel it they start listing somebody will say put jacob there somebody has put your name the name does not appear on the paper so circumstances are created by people i'm teaching here so finally when you receive your sack later plenty of things have happened a lot of things have happened before it landed on your head that's why you're talking nobody's answering you because some of the people you are talking to were part of those that suggested your name people create circumstances if a husband and wife are fighting in most cases somebody entered their marriage gossip say your wife hmm your wife hmm then the man will say what your wife i won't talk much a situation has been created what has been created a situation who created it somebody not he didn't say anything but he has said everything your wife hmm your wife hmm anyway bible say what god has joined together <laughs> he has even used bible to solidify the trouble he has created in your home people are responsible so when you see circumstances in life they don't fall from the sky they are generated by people so if i want to pray and control a circumstance how do i pray that's what i want to teach you now how do we pray and deal with circumstances when circumstances are created by people are you ready i said are you ready in luke chapter 22 jesus said simon simon satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as with but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not and when thou art restored strengthen thy brethren so this is a situation where jesus had to pray for a circumstance created now take note of this 68 times over 68 times in the new testament and you know what the new testament is let me just do a little bit of exam where is the new testament huh? from acts to where all right so in the new testament the prayers that were prayed all through the new testament we are all prayers of supplication supplication very important prayer it is called the prayer of supplication the word for it is this is d-e-e-s-i-s in the greek or aito a-i-t-e-o these are very strong greek words supplication satan desires to have you that he may sift you but i have asked concerning you i have asked concerning you the way the prayer of supplication is prayed is different from the way you pray for things all right so let's look at jesus's prayer life quickly luke chapter 3 verse 21 now when all the people were baptized it came to pass that jesus also being baptized and praying the heaven was open he didn't say and jesus prayed he said and praying it was a continuous action the prayer of supplication is continuous it's not like the prayer for things and praying jesus was supplicating and praying what happened before john's baptism he was praying what happened during john's baptism he was praying he was praying to receive take note john is about to baptize jesus and in that baptism the holy ghost will come on jesus so because jesus knows that this baptism of john by prophecy was going to announce the arrival of the spirit on him began to pray for the manifestation of that prophecy and he didn't pray and stop he was praying till the spirit descended on him supplication he was praying till the spirit descended on him water baptism actually fundamentally doctrinally emphatically authoritatively water baptism was only given to john the baptist to use in knowing who jesus is that's all the mission of water baptism 
was given to john because john was the last prophet and his mission was to announce jesus for him to announce jesus he must identify him and john doesn't know who jesus is so it was given to him as a sign since he was not a spiritual man so the spirit cannot lead him so he needs physical symbols i don't know if i'm teaching here somebody say where is that john 1 25 and they asked him and said unto him why baptizest thou then before that why baptizest thou go back to verse 23 he said i am the voice of one crying in the wilderness make straight the way of the lord as said the prophet Isaiah, according to what isaiah said, oh, that my assignment as john is to make straight i am here to announce the coming of christ that is the prophecy concerning me john the baptist was aware of his mission next verse and they which were sent were of the pharisees they were inquiring why are you baptizing people because they have never seen it before how will you just carry adults and be soaking them inside the water and they asked him and said unto him why baptizest thou then if thou be not that christ nor elias neither that prophet next verse john answered them saying i baptize with water but there standeth one among you whom you know not i know not you know not we don't know him but he is around he is around but we don't know him and i am here to announce him how can i announce him whom i know not next verse he it is who coming after me is preferred before me who should latch it i'm not worthy to unloose next verse these things were done in bethbara beyond jordan where john was baptizing the next day john seared jesus coming unto him and said behold the lamb of god which taketh away the sin of the world next verse this is he of whom i said after me cometh a man which is preferred before me for he was before me and i knew him not but that he should be made manifest to israel therefore am i come baptizing the reason why i'm baptizing is for this man to be revealed to israel i'm teaching here that is the mission of water baptism and john bore record saying i saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him and i knew him not but he that sent me to baptize with water the same said unto me upon whom thou shalt see the spirit descending and remaining on him the same is he which baptizeth with the holy ghost that's to say when you are baptizing anybody among the people you are baptizing that a dove will come on that is the person so the mission of water baptism was to announce jesus jesus has been announced the purpose has been finished if i'm teaching say i hear you that's right what are you talking about that was why john was giving water baptism then john himself placed a disclaimer on the water baptism he said me now what are they use but this one when he comes he will not use water he will baptize you with the holy ghost has he come the water baptism is over this is the day of the baptism with the holy ghost if you're catching doctrine shout i hear i hear get back to prayer so we are dealing with circumstances so what, what took me to water baptism when i was talking about jesus you know and uh, how he prayed it was his prayer that made him receive the holy spirit the holy spirit didn't just come because it was prophesied jesus had to supplicate while he was praying praying even in the baptism he was praying in the baptism in the midst of the prayer bam he received the holy ghost luke chapter 5 verse 16 and he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed he was always praying he prayed amen so look captures the motions of jesus all this shows that prayer is not just about things prayer is about fellowshipping with god because now he went to pray no prayer point so actually what he went to do in the wilderness was fellowship just to fellowship 
it's not every time you must have father give me this i receive i receive there are times you just worship father i bless you i praise you lord blessed be your holy name thank you for the salvation of my soul thank you that my sins are forgiven thank you for accepting me in the beloved thank you that i'm complete in you who is the head of all principalities and powers thank you that i'm seated with you in heavenlies far above every devil thank you lord that in you i am justified and you are glorified in me i rejoice that i am bone of your bones and flesh of your flesh i cannot be confused because i am led by your spirit i worship you jesus i praise you i bless you thank you lord that's prayer you have fellowship it's not every time i say father that car no you don't have to have a need before you pray See? you pray all the time and then in the course of prayer if a need arises you ask and receive and you have so prayer becomes the air you breathe it becomes your life somebody say prayer very important say it again prayer very important a christian that does not pray is powerless because you're not making power available you're not executing or exercising your authority on the earth luke chapter 6 verse 12 and it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to god jesus did tarry night tarry night for things no tarry night for what fellowship just spend all night fellowshipping with god not asking for anything but just fellowshipping with god just fellowshipping that goes a long way to show that jesus was a man and he needed those prayers he depended on those prayers god does not pray did you hear that hey i say god doesn't pray who will he pray to he doesn't pray so what he does is he answers prayer he doesn't pray so for jesus to pray means he was not god he was man this establishes his humanity too god doesn't pray to anybody everybody prays to him he prays to nobody he sits on the seat answering prayers <laughs> that's why he is god amen praise god i say praise god somebody say supplication can i hear you say it very loud is that how loud you can be john 11 33 when jesus therefore saw her weeping and the jews also weeping which came with her he groaned in the spirit that word groan is prayer he prayed he prayed he prayed a kind of prayer that was spirit motivated he groaned he groaned he was praying and said where have you laid him they said unto him lord come and see jesus wept he didn't weep because he cannot raise him he wept out of compassion it was still prayer prayer was still going on next verse then said the jews behold how he loved him look at verse 41 then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid and jesus lifted up his eyes and said father i thank thee that thou hast heard me has heard me that means all that time he was groaning he was praying and by the time now he arrived at where lazarus was he was still praying and to round up his prayer he brought thanksgiving did i say rounding up prayer how do you round it up thanksgiving so now he brings thanksgiving into his supplication now as he finishes this prayer of supplication with thanksgiving what happened in the next verse and i knew that thou hearest me always but because of the people which stand by i said it that they may believe that thou hast sent me all these things i'm saying publicly is so that they will see that me and you are in contact next verse and when he does have spoken he cried with a loud voice lazarus comfort he didn't say i have finished praying when when you go there lazarus will wake up eh, eh. the prayer of supplication you pray it until the answer appears you don't stop even after he has thanked him for hearing him and he has thanked him for hearing this particular prayer for lazarus when he came to lazarus stop, he still gave instructions because in the prayer of supplication you pray you praise you thank and you give instructions because it's not a prayer of believe you receive and you shall have it's supplication it is what james called the heartfelt continued earnest prayer heartfelt continued earnest 
is heartfelt, is continued, you don't stop. You don't stop. Heartfelt comes from your heart. Amen. Heartfelt. Fellowship is involved. Thanksgiving is involved. Making a request is involved. And then giving of instructions is all involved in the prayer of supplication. He didn't say Lazarus, hear God now. Hear God now. Lazarus, hear God. Because me and God have spoken. He said, Lazarus, comfort. And he that was dead came out. So in the place of prayer, we must make specific requests, specific instructions, and specific demands. The prayer of supplication. Amen. I said amen. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avail it much. Amen. So when praying for a life partner, you pray and pray and pray till you marry her. You pray. When she says yes, you continue praying. Eh? Are you hearing? When you marry, you continue praying. It's prayer that has no end. It's called the prayer of supplication. Look, when we were coming to today's service, we all prayed for the service. After this service, we will thank God that it was successful. Then we will pray again because there will be service tomorrow. This kind of prayer does not finish. You keep praying it till the trumpet sounds. It's continued heartfelt. Continued heartfelt. It's not the type you, I receive. It's not what things soever you desire. This is not prayer for things. When you are praying for marriage, it's not a prayer for things. Because even a day before the wedding, the girl can change her mind. So you must stay continue, and the man can change his mind. Supplication with perseverance for all saints. Supplication. Some of you are lazy. That's why you can't find a husband. You are lazy. You pray small. Thank you, Jesus. I know he's coming. Three years after, you pray some more. Father, wherever he is now, I lose his leg. I lose it. You, you don't. <laughs> you face the prayer like a project. Then when you marry, you change gear and continue the prayer. Because even after you are married, he can be collected. And she can be. Co Haven't you seen the collection of his husband? It's a question. Be looking at me. <laughs> they have collected people's husbands in your very presence. So that's why you continue in prayer. You, you don't leave things to chance. You pray. And that's why you come to church to hear the word. So that the word of God can continue to walk on the boat of you. Reminding you who you are and keeping you in faith. I'm teaching here. Some of you are careless. Your wife, your husband is not coming for Bible study. You are not bothered. Yeah, he's a very busy man. Hard working. God bless me with a hard worker. My husband works like machine. Machine. He traveled for three weeks now. He has not come back. I know that when he's coming back, it will be millions. Machine. Machine. Then six weeks, he has not come back. He has not come back home machine he has gone for another project see you ahead <laughs> you need to bring him with you to church you need to be in church with him two of you need to be in the service because the more word you are hearing the more you are reminded of who you are and where you are the more you're looking into the mirror and the more you're making adjustments bible says as we see the day approaching we must not dismiss the assembling of ourselves together because the days are getting more and more evil iniquity is abounding therefore to stay in the house and keep looking at the mirror becomes more essential shout i hear you stand up let's close I prophesy to everyone under the sound of my voice nobody will take your inheritance nobody will take your portion nobody will possess your inheritance 
as your amen is coming like thunder what you've been praying for i join my faith with you we agree together you receive manifestation receive a delivery of it and you will not only receive you will sustain it you will not only receive you will keep it everything that the father has given to you nobody will take it from you if your amen is louder receive grace receive grace receive grace receive grace somebody say my heart is established in grace and not with meat i didn't hear your amen lift your hands and give him thanks give him thanks give him thanks koroto koboro kosuda membrato keboro kosuta la nama ele boje kere de gebo zota ele bado karanda kotoko lo dobo ho ho ele bo shakala nama ha membrato shekele de mos membrato kele ne majokro toko lo dobo ho ho go ahead give him praise give him praise Mboro kosoke koroto moho ele manoko korodo boshekea praise you my father in the name of jesus it is done well if you believe it go ahead and celebrate and give the lord a praise glory glory welcome back ladies and gentlemen welcome back i believe you've been affected impacted by the word of his grace that's the whole joy that when the word of god comes life comes and life comes